Welcome, welcome, welcome back, everybody, to the Rhino and Curtis podcast. We are back from our Easter Easter break hi, hi, uh, hiatus, I guess I was trying to say. Um, we, today we're going to talk some NBA playoffs, uh, the new Tony Hawk documentary, the Beastie Boys Check Your Head album turning 30. Some guy tries to pick a fight with Mike Tyson on an airplane. Ric Flair now has an edible. Uh, we're going to talk some uh, four horsemen uh, fantasy camp here. Um, and and final, we're going to have um, our death penalty uh, meal. Yeah, I mean, it's a loaded show. Sorry we missed you guys last week. Uh, you know, Easter, it's kind of tough to find a time on Easter Sunday with everything going on. Uh, we'll talk about, you know, Easter and what it means as far as, uh, you know, the celebration, the food. Um, you all know what the reason for the season is. We won't go into that. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about all those things. First of all, I think we're going to talk about coaching changes. Um, in the last calendar year in college basketball, we've lost uh, Roy Williams, which is all right with me. And then Coach K <laughs> announces he's going to step down a year later. Uh, and then this, this week right here, uh, Jay Wright from Villanova decides he's had enough maybe. And, uh, you know, you you asked me, Dang man, why that guy retire? But he is sixty years old, and and I, I guess he, you see athletes doing this more often now, and maybe coaches are going to too. They made enough money uh, by the time they've been in their twenty years that they don't have to coach until their seventies or eighties. And you know, maybe with the NIL deal and the transfer portal, I think some of these old time coaches are about tired of this stuff. So, what do you think about about Jay Wright and and uh, Coach K and Roy Williams and and guys like that, you know, we, all we really got left from our generation is uh, Bayheim, Calipari, and uh, Patino, maybe. Yeah, I guess. Um, if I think what you said with the the um, the NIL and the transport transfer portal, I can't talk today. By the way, um, <laughs> a lot of these older guys are um, just looking to get out. It looks like. I mean, you can't blame them. Me and you would quit working today if we didn't have to. So, I don't need one of them contracts, man. I don't need twenty <laughs> years of this. You give me a five-year deal, I'll be out the door. I'll be pulling the Calvin Johnson, uh, retired at twenty-nine, and I don't even have to put up with it no more. So, I get it. This is interesting. Like, will we see coaches? A coach that long, but like you know, John Shire takes over for Coach K. He probably won't get fired unless he really messes up. But will he coach to he's 65 or 70? That'll be interesting. You know, who takes over for Jim Beheim when he decides to leave? You know, that's going to be an interesting one. I'm sure he'll have three or four kids, uh, Bucky and Buddy and all those Beheims that are probably be uh, potential replacements. But, you know, it's interesting to see, like, the Izzos and the Mark Fuse, the Bill Selfs, who's going to take – who's going to fill their shoes uh, when it's time to go? Yeah, a lot of those guys that are still left, Calipari's and stuff. I mean, they're the, they're the names now, so no excuses for them. They're the names, and they get to actually pay the players whatever they want. It's legal, kind of a, it's part of a recruiting deal, so it's kind of nuts. Anyway, uh, interesting to see, you know, the time frame of coaches. I don't think we'll see any 70-year-old guys hanging around anymore. Move forward. Uh, we're week into the N NBA playoffs. Um, a lot of interesting games where teams have been down by double digits and make a run and come back and win games. Uh, the Grizzlies were down by 25 twice to, Timber, uh, to the Timberwolves uh, the other night and ended up winning that game outright. The Heat were up by double digits with like five minutes to go. The Hawks come back and win. It's been a crazy playoff. I, I guess it's good. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's probably bad basketball. If you go and give up 21-0 run to another team, you're playing bad basketball. But uh, what's your biggest takeaway or surprise so far from the NBA playoffs? What have you seen that, you know, just interests you or maybe concern you or, you know, whatever? I don't know if it's necessarily a surprise, but the, the Celtics look really good. Like, you know, they've picked up the second half of the year. They look, like, really good. Um, the Bucks look really good. The Warriors, I guess when we were – the last I looked, they were down. I don't know if they've come back yet, but but uh, they were down pretty good. But they could come back real quick. The Warriors did look really good. Um, I don't know. I think it's going to be Warriors and Bucks. 
Man, Grayson Allen is playing re- very well for the Bucks right now. One thing for that too, just just to get off on a Grayson Allen took out a uh, bald Mamba Caruso for Chicago, and they were complaining about it pretty good. Now I'm not I'm not saying Chicago should go out and just take out Grayson Allen, but th- these past two games have been in Chicago, and they're just letting Grayson Allen light them up. I mean, you would think maybe you know a little hard foul here or there. They're just letting him light him up. Yeah, you you think that there would be some retaliation, and there may be. Once this thing gets three to one and they're down 20 in the fourth, uh, Grayson Allen may want to go to the showers because there won't be no reason not to, you know, give him a little hack shack But the biggest surprise to me is, like you said, the Celtics, and this is what I like about teams, you know, that's not super teams, like the Nets. You know, I've watched the last two games – and the Celtics play such good defense one-on-one. They don't trap. They don't do a lot of that. They put Tatum on, on uh, Durant, or they may have Horford out there. They may – Danny Thies may be out there. Uh, Marcus Smart's playing good D, Jalen Brown. And they don't have any superstars. Don't get me wrong. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are in that in that conversation. But they didn't bring any in. They got a, they, they play a team game, a lot of defense. And they, they frustrated Durant where Durant doesn't look like a top five player anymore. I mean, he doesn't look like, I don't know, man. He doesn't look like what we used, what we're used to seeing uh, him look like and Kyrie either. Uh, you know, I know Kyrie was doing the Ramadan where he didn't eat anything before game two and didn't eat until the sunrise or sunset or whatever, but he still looked bad. You're right. The Warriors have looked pretty good. I wish Zion would have came back. I feel like the Pelicans, had a shot to beat the Suns with Devin Booker out if you put Zion in. Um, the Miami Heat's a good team. They're deep, and that, they're a team that can give people trouble because they can they can play uh, the perimeter with Hero, and uh, all of the guys really can shoot. But they can get inside with Bam Abadayo or whatever, and they can play inside. Jimmy Butler can do both. Um, they can shoot real well. He's going to be trouble in the East. Um, but like you said, the Bucks are probably the team to beat because the Greek freak, when he wants to, he can take over a game and now he can shoot a little better in the West. Like you said, the Warriors, that assassin offense or what assassin lineup or whatever it's called, death row lineup or whatever they got out there where they all can shoot and they long. Um, it's, it's good. Like you said, they are losing though, but I think all these teams are going to lose one or two. I think it's so much parody in the NBA now. And, uh, it's like the Hawks, man. I mean, they suck. Uh, they they're terrible and they beat the heat uh, the other night. So we'll see. It's gonna be interesting. Yes, I think it's these teams that don't really have the, the super drama ego people are, are the ones that are showing that they just want to win. You know, look at John Morant, man. That guy just wants to put it on you. I mean that whole team. You can't even really the name Warrior, the, the five Warriors. I mean Durant Durant probably wishes he stayed in Golden State because I mean Kyrie made the mistake of saying, you know, they just hadn't had enough time to gel as a team yet. And out of his uh, 11 years in the league, he's played over 60 games four times. So, and, and that and guy sucks. We talk about that like every – every. <laughs> oh, the guy sucks, definitely. But now Ben Simmons has felt a slip in his back and he probably won't be available for game four. I don't I – don't, that guy sucks too. That guy's a shitty human being. I mean, I just, I just cut him. There's no use for him. I mean, I don't want to, I, I don't want a wimp, a wimpy guy like that on my team. Um, it's terrible. But anyway, that's really all the sports is going on. Baseball is just getting started. Uh, we missed uh, Scotty Shepherd winning the Masters. Um, uh, Jordan Spieth winning the Heritage. That's really no big deal. Tyson Fury retains the championship last night. He's one of our guys. He'd be a great guest on this show. I'd love to have Tyson Fury uh, drop an interview uh, on here, but we'd probably have to put the R rating on there. But uh, outside of that, there's not a whole lot in sports going on, spring football, stuff like that. So uh, we'll have to go off the grid. So we'll go into uh, documentaries and stuff we've watched. Um, Kurt, you can start it off. We got three we're going to talk about. You go with whichever one you want to. I'll interject uh, as I can. Um, So fire off the first one. I guess, I guess we'll start with the Tony Hawk. I'll watch that one until the wheels come off or until the wheels fall off on HBO Max. Uh, 
think everybody in some shape or form knows who Tony Hawk is. He's the best skateboarder of all time. Uh, I skateboarded for a long time, so I'm kind of more into that stuff and have followed it over the years. But uh, it's definitely an interesting watch just from somebody who, you know, everybody sees X Games and all this kind of stuff. It, it didn't used to be that. This is a guy who, when he was like 11 years old, was doing tricks and all the old pros hated him because the stuff he was inventing, inventing, they thought it was cheating. That's how crazy the stuff he was doing. They thought he was cheating. He ended up starting beating the old pros and everybody kind of hated him. So this is a guy, basically just shows he skateboarded when he didn't make money. Then he made money. He had a house in high school. That whole, you know, you probably had a skateboard after Back to the Future came out. Everybody at least had a Walmart skateboard or something. And that's when that's the boom hit. <laughs> then, a nice headroom uh, skateboard then it just kind of shows in the like early 90s when skateboarding died and he wasn't making money he was still doing it then it picked back up again so now he's 53 years old and he's still doing it is what what the things about this guy's still out there trying to do certain things and people are worried about him he broke his femur like after this, like promoting this documentary, he had a broken femur. And all he talks about now is how he was, wants to get back on the board. So it's just basically just talking about a guy who just loves what he does. I mean, it's kind of, I mean, you can't compare it to like team sports because it's, but I mean, you know, Tom Brady's still come back. I don't know if that's ego or he just loves it or what. But uh, one thing uh, I think I talked to you about about it is, uh, Tony Hawk's going through this thing. He's older now, not doing quite as crazy stuff. He's retiring tricks. So he'll do it for one last time. Like I know everybody probably remembers in the late nineties when he did the 900 in the X games, he's recently done the 900 for the very last time. And we decided as grown old people. Now we've decided, uh, there's things we probably should be retiring. And every, every person should be retiring. So, uh, what are some things you think you need to retire, Rana? I'll tell you some things I have retired. Anything that comes in an ounce shot glass, regardless of what it is, Jägermeister, Gold Slogger, uh, Fireball, anything liqueur is, fi is, is on the shelf for me and in the vault. Uh, probably a lot of things I should retire, uh, red mead and stuff like that, but I ain't going that far yet. But I didn't put liquor on the shelf. Like I'll still occasionally, you know, drink a cold one if uh, we eating supper or hanging out. I'll drink two or three, maybe something like that. But as far as uh, alcohol goes, anything above about five percent, I'm out on. So that's that's pretty much what I put on my shelf. Before I throw it to you, I want to do want to say one thing for guys like me who aren't in the X Games type genre, who don't really follow that. Um, you know, occasionally watch X Games and feels on ESPN. But everybody listening to this right here. Uh, the thousands that are listening to this podcast right now, um, <laughs> you know, they know who Tony Hawk is. They probably don't know anybody else who drives a skateboard, maybe like a Bam Margera or somebody like that, just because of jackass. But if you gave, ask somebody a top five, I don't think anybody can name five that we, we roll with, you know, maybe a couple of guys here or there that just ended that, but it's a random dude. They know Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk is the Wayne Gretzky of uh, skateboarding. You know, you can argue about Tom Brady being the best. Maybe, maybe not. You can argue Griffey Jr. or Babe Ruth, LeBron and Jordan and, and that. But you can't really argue about Tony Hawk. You know, he's the plateau of skateboarding. And even for the layman like myself who don't know anything about it, uh, like you said, I bought a skateboard as a kid, thought I was going to be slick, tore up the skin on my knee, retired that. I shelved that at about nine years old. Um, but you know, Tony Hawk is that's one of them dudes, man. It's like uh, the face of the franchise and by a big, big margin. I know you uh, have changed over in the last decade or so, becoming more healthy and stuff, uh, you know, finding time to run and, and, and work out, jump rope, eat better, cut out sodas. What, what, what's something you share? What's your list of things you put on the shelf that you don't mess with no more? Yeah, shots were, were one of mine as well. Um, also on that list is uh, staying, uh, nights out, staying out late. The, that's uh, hanging from the rafters now. That's yeah. uh, We've retired that. Um, fully agree. Yeah, yeah like you said, um, not just sitting around and stuffing my face with uh, 
whatever's in the house. Not that I don't do that every now and again, but I'm not slim good buddy or anything, but definitely trying to get, get 30 minutes hour exercise in a day or something, man. It's, it's just a lot of things you probably should retire as you get older. Like you said, uh, alcohol, we, neither one of us really do it any much. So even when we do it, that's not like a 900 for us. That's like just rolling down the street. It's not yeah, anything too dangerous a anymore. Yeah. <laughs> do a little holly and get on back to normal life. Wake up the next day, want something to eat and drink water. Uh, body armor is what I drink. But anyway, I yeah. Well, that's pretty think- good. Tony, all like we said, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a look. I haven't watched it yet. But moving on to another icon, uh, uh, Beastie Boys, and I think you know. Me, I had two tapes I wore out in the RCA Walkman, and that was uh, Richard Pryor. That is crazy. Bleep that uh, the N word out. Uh, is crazy from Richard Pryor and the Beastie Boys licensed the EO tape. And the Beastie Boys were uh, something new. You know, we didn't see white rappers uh, back then. And uh, that, that album, Licensed the EO, was, was loaded from top to bottom, from No Sleep to Brooklyn, uh paul revere um you know fight for your right to party in between everything in between was solid and i know these are your boys number one on your list uh on your mount rushmore music uh the one tattoo you do have is of the beastie boys so these are your guys what you think of the documentary how do you think it uh represented uh the beastie boys and uh you know go from there yeah there's a documentary on um Apple Plus, Beastie Boys story, if you haven't seen it. It's actually about a year old, just check it out. But the reason we're talking about it is this is uh, the 30th anniversary of their third album, Check Your Head, which, uh, yeah, like Rhino said, these are Beastie Boys are my Beatles. So the um, thing about this album is kind of, we didn't necessarily come up with a white people trend, but we got a white people, black people trend that I look around everybody else. We're getting old. So this is the album... That was 17 years old when I bought, um, did a, uh, did a music review, um, article for it in school newspaper, matter of fact. So something I, I wrote something about, by the way, and, uh, this was kind of like a, you know, they're in rock and roll hall of fame now. Like, like you said, licensed ill, there's probably people, you know, a millions of listeners. That's all they know that the beastie boys ever had. Right. So after that, they had Paul's boutique, which tanked. So this album's kind of crucial. If this album tank, we might not be talking about the Beastie Boys, how we talk about them, just because if this album flopped, they might not be the Hall of Fame band they are, because now that second album, The Tank, Paul's Boutique, is considered one of the best albums of all time, because it was just kind of ahead of its time and sounded nothing like License to Ill. But yeah, just just like something to be talking about is that an album when we were in high school is now 30 years old, which is just... Totally screws in my head. Mine too. <laughs> Any, <laughs> anytime to... we bring up anything, like me and work, me and Kurt worked together at Coca Cola in the early two thousands, and we'll bring up something that happened uh, at work there, and then it, it hits you that man, that was two thousand one, you know, two thousand two. That's twenty years ago. You know, you, you know, you talk to old people, and our parents' age, and aunts, uncles, and fa- at a family. Uh, gatherings and they talk about old times and you never have anything to bring up with old times but now man everything's old times especially now that we've shelved so much of our you know last decades been a, a living as an adult you pick up some food on friday night eat at seven whatever you have on the uh you know the stream you watch a couple hours of that and you hit the sack you're not you know burning the midnight oil till 2 a.m so our memories you know, are less and less. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah, 30 years ago, man. So that means license to heal is what? Dang near 40, 35. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, let's see. That was 86. Be. Okay. So that's, so add six years, 36 years. Yeah, man. Jeez. Whiz, man. <laughs> 46 years old now, man. And you can tell it. it's great on lie. So yeah, BC boys, man. One of the, one of them white, one of the few white uh, rappers that kind of set the tone for maybe future white rappers, but it wasn't, it wasn't a gangster style. It was an appeal to everyone. It was an easy listen, especially that License to Hill. Uh, you know, they had some things in there, but it wasn't like, 
you know, robbing robbing the bank or killing the police. It was a more definitely, tame. Definitely brought rap music to the suburbs, kind of right gate, gateway for for the white people. So. All right, last one. We're going to talk about the Showtime Lakers. Um, I haven't watched this one either. Uh, I think Kurt's watched it. The, the, the biggest thing that I took away from it is, like, you can make a, a film about something and really don't have to have any of the participants agree to what you say about it. You know, you can pretty much claim whatever you want. I see Jerry West is up in arms asking for an apology claims he didn't do any of the things that he's representative uh, to have done. So how do you feel about it? From what you thought about the Showtime Lakers going in from Kareem and Magic and Byron, Michael Cooper, AC Green, you know, whoever, that 80s team that won three or four championships that battled uh, the Celtics through the 80s. What did you take away from it? What's your thoughts about it? Yeah, what we're talking about is winning time on HBO Max. It's a, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, it's got shows like, man, what I can't think of his name. So and so plays um Pat Riley. Um, they're just talking about the build building up drafting uh, Magic Johnson and but yeah, Jerry West should be should be um pissed off about it because uh it makes him like a jerk, man. I did, you know, we follow basketball. I've never really knew that jerry west was a jerk just heard he was like a really good gm but uh obviously you can make a show about people and without any repercussions because uh they have on this one it's a good show it's it's a good watch it's just magic's not happy about it uh kareem's not happy about it uh, obviously you can so if rhino if somebody want to make a rhino movie they could who would play you <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think you got enough. I don't think you got enough of Bobcat Goldthwait to play me. I think maybe somebody like that. I don't think you got enough to make it about me, but I just don't, you know, the last dance kind of opened the door for all of these, but the last dance is something that may not be matched because it was set up years in the making in that 96 team or whatever with the thought of doing this 20 years. So these, now you have to kind of rewind and find, clips and find tapes and find the people and interview stuff and it's a whole different dynamic and uh i just don't know how you go about making a story when none of the main characters are involved i mean this isn't some scandal necessarily i mean this isn't you know a, old, a cold case murder or you know anything like this it's a it's people that are still in the limelight you still see magic at the ball games at the dodgers games you know, you still see Kareem talking about social justice and stuff like that, and Pat rallies around. I just don't know how that works, man. I don't know how you can make a film about somebody and not have them included. And then on top of that, you know, kind of throw dirt on the name. I don't know. Yeah, it definitely what shows uh, it shows magic. It shows magic in his womanizing ways so far. I haven't, I haven't finished the show yet. I know Magic does have his own documentary that just came out this week on um, Apple Plus. I haven't watched it yet. So I guess maybe that's his way of telling his story on top of this. But uh, if you're into sports, you, definitely both of those you should check out. What do you think is more surprising for Magic Johnson? Uh, finding out um, he was HIV positive or that his son looked like Grace Jones? <laughs> which one hurt more you think i don't know i don't know it doesn't look like the hiv has hurt him too bad so nah the only guy i know to get hiv gained 60 pounds and, and two franchises i mean hell that's a good look yes. for him hell he bought the dodgers he owns part of the lakers and uh he's still married to his wife for 30 plus years so i don't know what's going on there i guess if you got money that don't affect you i, I don't really know uh <laughs> interesting though the ej EJ went a different route. I'm sure Magic had dreams of his son being a point guard for the Lakers like LeBron does Bronny, but yeah, it doesn't when, look like that. When he announced that, wasn't she pregnant? Was she pregnant with him when he announced that? Am I wrong? Yeah. What, what it, she didn't I don't know have... if it was with him. Oh. But yeah, he's definitely seems like an interesting character. <laughs> I like interesting. That's a good way to put it. 
All right, so we're gonna put that to bed <laughs> right now. Like I said, not a lot of sports. We go. I'm gonna check out that Magic Johnson documentary. We'll have something to talk about next week. Plus, whatever else is on the uh, Netflix, what's trending in the U.S. Uh, check out some of them shows this week. I've been watching some old shows um, lately, um, and then hell, I've been watching like going to bed watching Tubi, watching like different strokes and like Family Ties and stuff. Man, just kicking it back to those which are which are always entertaining and, and Alf. Also, uh, always get a big kick out of Alf. I think that's one of the best shows that's ever been on TV. I don't care what nobody says. Like top you like cats? Ones. Yeah, the cats. I'm not real big on, but other than that, I'm I'm a big I'm a big jokester, like my man uh, Alf. All right, so we're gonna run this little, like you said, uh, four horsemen university or four horsemen camp. Um, I saw a, a question posed on Twitter, and it was a wrestling guy, of course. And he said, who was, uh, who never was a horseman that you always thought should have been? Now, if most of you who are listening to this probably watch wrestling. And you remember the horseman as being Ric Flair, uh, Ole Anderson, Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchard, and then with J.J. Dillon. That was the original. And then as like Ole left out and some of these guys, you know, mix and match, we got Lex Luger, we got Barry Wendell, who is terrible. We got Sting, Sid Vicious, Paul Roma, uh, Brian Pillman, two of my favorites, Chris Benoit, Dean Malenko. And then uh, you got Mongo McMichaels, who was the worst horseman, worse than Barry Windham, and Kurt Henning. So you mix and match it all. I like that that near the end horseman with, uh, when Dean Malenko and Chris Benoit got on there because I thought them two dudes handled business. And, I, you know, Ric Flair was, of course, the mouthpiece there. Arn Anderson was the enforcer. So, you know, back in the mid 80s up into the early 90s, this was where they were. Sid Vicious, another dumb one. Um, Sting being in there is kind of a unique one because Sting was at the peak. What uh, is not a good Sting is not a good horseman. I no, like no, no, Sting. not a good not horseman. A good horse. But I'm saying he was at the peak of popularity, I guess is what I'm yeah. saying. Like he was a, a peak guy, not a good horseman necessarily. But and then Lex Luger was a Pete guy too. At you know he had his time in both in both wrestling organizations. Um, so who who's somebody back in your NWA slash WCW days you thought would have rolled in there and been a good horseman? Um, getting back to just my thoughts on the horseman. I wasn't. I wrote in, wasn't a big Dean Malenko guy. Good wrestler. I mean, I like Benoit. He's a good wrestler. Uh, even better murderer. But uh, Mongo, I would uh, not not go along. <laughs> I wouldn't go along with Mongo. Suck too. I like Barry Windham. But uh, Barry when you ask this, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go just somebody to replace during that whole Malenko Mongo time. I'm gonna go with either Booker T or Chris ben, Chris uh, Jericho. Both good talkers. Then there never was a yeah. black horseman. Uh, Booker T, I think, would have been a good one. He could put on a nice little suit, could have styled and profiled, good on the mic. Booker T's a bad dude, too, man. That whole heat combination, them dudes were athletic. When I mean, they hit you with that spinning heel kick, man, you're going to sleep. I was thinking more back in our um, NWA days. I thought somebody like Ronnie Garvin or maybe Ricky Steamboat. I don't know how they would have fit and not necessarily the great talkers. Steamboat and Flair had a bunch of great matches. Um, so maybe, you know, just a heel turn or baby face flip, whatever you want to call it. I don't like to see those. Ronnie Garvin was one of them good ones. He didn't have a lot of flash about him, but he had the hands of stone. Um, yeah, Chris Jericho, that's a that's a pretty good one. It's hard to believe Chris Jericho's been around for, what, damn near 30 years now, something like that? Yeah. I mean, if you go back to the NWA days, what about instead of uh... – him being in the varsity club. What about Mike Rotundo? Mike Rotundo, Mike Rotundo is a dark headed Barry Wyndham. That guy's <laughs> no good. I'd rather have Kendall Wyndham and Brad Armstrong. Get out of here with them two guys. Them clowns. You give me Barry Wyndham and Mike Rotundo trash can them guys. They're no good. I'd rather have Black Jack Mulligan. Give me the original. <laughs> Junkyard Dog or Wahoo McDaniels. Dusty Rhodes or somebody. Dusty Rhodes would have. With a with a with a heel turn or something that'd have been interesting, but uh, those were the days. Just curious if you was thinking about 
you know, everybody knows the horseman. Everybody knows the four horse and everybody knows Ric Flair, uh, especially Tully and Arn. Maybe some of you don't know who Ole Anderson was. It was supposedly Arn's uncle, the Minnesota wrecking crew, uh, dudes who have pot bellies and beards. They just happen to look kind of like each other. But uh, they enfor- it was enforcers back then. Speaking of which, with Ric Flair, he's now teamed up with Mike Tyson uh, to sell Woo Chews. A uh, you know everybody's on this uh, gummy uh, THC type deal, um, and now uh, Ric Flair, you know, he's trying to make money wherever he can. Um, so he's in the game. He's he's got in there with Mike Tyson. And uh, what you think about the what you think about the weed gummy, um, Kurt? I know me and you know folks who partake in the the weed gummies. We do not. I'm not necessarily against it. I think at some point, um, instead of these guys taking uh, heavy painkillers, maybe weed is a natural uh, helper in pain, sleep, anxiety. I think it's good to a certain degree. I don't think getting stoned out of your mind where you slobbering on yourself is a great idea. Uh, I think this is where we get the gray area of the medicinal. Medicinal, which helps you eat or digestion or, you know, anxiety. I get that part. The part where you, uh, you know, like I said, you slobbering down your face and can't remember your your social security number. That's not a good thing. But uh, what's your take on what's your take on the gummies, Kurt? I know you haven't partaken in them, but what's, what's your what's your idea? Uh, I mean, everybody seems to have them now, so I'm not really against them or anything, but, uh, I guess if I was to, I guess I don't, I don't know anything about them, man. If there's a store or something that had them, I'm probably going to buy the Ric Flair one that all the people I've heard of have having these now. I'm probably going to buy it over Snoop Dogg or Urkel or whoever else got them now. So probably not a bad idea to get into it, so. You don't want the Mystery Machine, the Scooby Doo brand, uh, Mystery Machine? Oh, I didn't know Scooby Doo. Ha- I didn't know Scooby Doo had one. So. Yeah, I'm sure uh, that one might be a good one for you. Yeah, I don't know a lot about them either, and um, I, I just don't know my reaction. Like, I don't really, I don't necessarily need to get out of my state of mind. Like, I, I don't, you know, I, I'm cool with being in my state of mind and remembering everything that happened. Um, like I said, we got friends that do them, they seem to enjoy them um and you know i'm not against it i think it's cool it's better than taking like you know prescription stuff that'll make you nuts uh you know there's a lot of people that are are, 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 you know dialed up on xanax and and all kind of methamphetamines and stuff to to be right so it's not a bad thing uh matter of fact if i was older and just sitting around i may give them a shot uh relax but i don't have no problem sleeping and i ain't in pain for doing nothing so uh, it just yeah. not really, it just don't really hit me that hard, you know. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, as you know, uh, I keep finding new and newer and newer things that I'm allergic to in my older age. So I'm all about just not trying new things. So I'm good right now. So I'm not against it. N- nothing against people that do it. Yeah, me neither. Speaking of Mike Tyson, uh, we had Mike Tyson hit the news this week uh, on an airplane. Uh, kid, I say kid, younger guy. Uh, you know, asked for a selfie, gets the selfie, and obviously had been sitting at the airport bar a little long and got intoxicated and started talking trash to Mike Tyson. I think he threw a water bottle at him. And, uh, you know, eventually Mike Tyson turns around and, and comes back there and gives him a one-two to the cheek. And, uh, you know, what do you think about that? I mean, what, what's your take on the uh, Mike Tyson? At, at what point, how much do you have to drink to where you would egg on Mike Tyson to come knock the hell out of you. How old was this guy? I think he's in his thirties, maybe. Late this guy probably. 30s. This guy obviously wasn't around when when um, middle school when people would pay sixty dollars for the pay per views to last uh, fifteen seconds. Because I can't think of a worse thing. Right. I can't think of a worse person to mess with uh, than Mike Tyson. No, I can't either. Uh, it, it's nuts. You know, he was coming back from a weed convention, but obviously he wasn't mellow enough not to go beat this guy's ass uh, in the in the plane. And then obviously he, after he hit him, he, he got his stuff and he left. Mike Tyson got off the plane. The dude had talked about pressing charges, but, you know, then his 
And then his background comes out that he's been in jail for larceny and theft and uh, domestic violence and all this. So he looks like a piece of shit. And he probably deserved getting the one two against the cheeks. Uh, when's the last time you felt like knocking the hell out of somebody? <laughs> Is there a time? I know you're a pretty mellow guy, but uh, when's the last time you was just like, you know what? I've had enough. If I was a different person, I'd probably walk over there and backhand that sucker. I mean, I oh, got man. several. I'm why, mellow too. Why, why don't you talk for a minute? Because I can't come up with the one off the top of my head. But, well, think like, about it. Well, I tell you, kids are the only thing that can make me uh nuts like if i go eat and i get it man if i go to a you know a regular sub shop or something like that man i understand uh you're gonna be there's gonna be kids in there running i don't know why kids are running around i don't know why you kids need a tablet needs a tablet to, to pay attention at the table you know when we was young you set your ass down you ate your little food and you didn't say a word uh, now you got kids running around barefoot all over the little house of pizza and everybody thinks it's funny to have bad kids. I guess a place like Chili's is probably supposed to be loud. But if I go to a place like Sam Kendall's and your kids screaming and hollering, uh, it, it takes away the experience for me. I want to go over there with the kid and the parent. Um, I feel the same way in church. If I go to church and your kid can't sit there in church and not pay attention and you, you don't have to give them snacks or a tablet or a pad, uh, you need to sit your ass on the pew and listen to the message from the preacher and not roll around on the ground or squeal and holler. And if it's a baby, that's what Miss Susan's for in the nursery, man. Take your baby down there to the nursery. They got one in every church. Kids make me want to slap. I want to slap kids and I want to slap parents. That's just the only thing that really irks me. Other than that, I don't really have a problem with so, anything. So, so one takeaway from this uh, podcast, if you're at like Lugoff House of Pizza and you see Rhino, Rhino over there on the booth and your kid's crying, he wants to beat the hell out of your kid. So keep him straight. And you. And you. <laughs> and you. And you. I, can't oh, man, come I, with, I can't come up with anything right now this, uh, that I can just You're so really laid back. Do. Don't nothing tick you off, man. You're so laid back. Don't I mean. Tick you off. Okay, you here must, we go. Here we, you I must be one. taking some of the edibles, man. People, <laughs> people that uh, just walk around stores with their music playing off of their phone. I don't want to hear your music, man. Uh, I agree. Everybody's got AirPods and all that kind of stuff now. So there's no excuse for somebody just walking around playing. And it's not any particular one. I can hear, I hear the baby playing or I hear Guns N' Roses coming out of it. It's a little bit of everybody. Most of it's at yeah, Dollar I'm General, too. I'm a full agreement. Uh, it's the same thing at the gas station. It's, it's weird to me. And people pull up to the gas station and then turn their music up and roll their windows down and cut their car off while they're pumping gas. I don't want to hear your music, man. I don't even like music that much. And that ain't likely I'm going to like your music. So I, I, don't listen, I don't listen to music that way, just playing out my phone speaker. <laughs> Sounds man, terrible anyway. It's stupid. The same That's thing. all I can it's, come up. It's, Sorry, like the next it's like the redneck woman yelling on the next tail. Uh, back in the day, having a conversation out loud and, and food land. All right, so now we're going to move on to Easter. Not really about anything other than what did you do on Easter, Kurt? What, what, what's a Keith family Easter? What did you guys have? What, what, I know I know what you brought to the table, but like you went to your sister's house. What, what's on the spread? Just give me a think, visual and then I'm going to give you mine. What did we have this year? We had some barbecue. We had some ham. Um, some sweet potato souffle. Um, we had some desserts. Um, there's some more stuff on there too, I believe. I can't remember. You know, kind of like a little no mac and cheese. Kind of like, kind of like a little Thanksgiving light spread. Where the, not, not, not all in on the as as Thanksgiving, but you know. I know white people love that ham, man. I don't understand it, but. I guess you don't like you don't like ham or chicken or turkey. So I mean, ham though, man. That's like ham. You're, you're, in, the, you're in the minority. You ain't even trying if you go with ham. It ain't even an effort. That's like you can go get a canned ham, throw it in the heater, and like here's a ham, ham in the pack, ham sandwich. You're not even trying. I think That's you know what you're talking about. But go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, it takes no, it takes no effort. It takes no effort to put the ham. I do appreciate you going to Ronnie's how much, and some barbecue. How much? How much effort do you put into any meal other than ordering it and picking it up? That's beside the point. 
Somebody had, to, somebody had to put some effort in. You went and got yeah, some yeah. barbecue that Ronnie had to sit out there over the smoker at least. Sit <laughs> I'm, out not there the one, I'm not I'm not the one uh, criticizing people's efforts. Yeah, hey, it was a poor effort. I'm just going to say that. Um, don't get me wrong. My mom, for like a random thing, she'd go get them shrimp rings and shrimp cocktails with a 75 shrimp on them that didn't defrost them, and that's what we'll have. So they ain't no effort. She don't put no effort either. I mean, I ain't singling you out. My mom don't put a lot of effort. Put the meatballs in the daggum crock pot and, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, a lot of people don't put in effort. If it was up to me, we'd all be getting super subs. So, you know, I, I mean, I, I ain't saying, I ain't knocking nobody. I'm just saying ham. That's a low on my totem pole. Anyway, I'm going to tell you about mine. We got invited, uh, one of Melissa's friends, uh, mom and, mo- and uh, mother-in-law, they had, they wanted to have Easter by the pool or uh, Easter. So they invited about 30 people. So, you know, they decided they was going to have hot dogs and sausages on the grill and everybody come by and get two hot dogs. And I know that sounds kind of funny, man, but I'm going to tell you, it was one of the best ones I had, but simply because they had a buffet set up. Ketchup, mustard, relish, onions, sauerkraut, slaw, potato salad, pasta salad, three desserts, cooler full of drinks, a gallon of Milo's tea, sit out by the pool under the umbrella. That was actually a good meal. Not a lot of effort. Mm, hot dogs on the grill. But man, I'm going to tell you, it's hard for me to beat slaw, potato salad, and pasta salad. You give me them three things, man. That make my Easter complete. So props on the hot dog. <laughs> props on the hot dog uh, dinner. Uh, I enjoyed yes. it. I ain't going to lie to you. This sounds yeah, crazy. No, no surprise from the guy that has a YouTube channel of doing hot dog reviews. So, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. No, no <laughs> surprise indeed. All right. We're going to wrap this thing up. Um, there's a fella in uh, South Carolina, and, and I don't understand how this works, but he killed a uh, clerk at a gas station grocery store 30 years ago or something. Now he's on death row, and he has the option. Uh, they took away the electrocution. No, they took away lethal injection because it was barbaric. They took away uh, uh, electrocution and lethal injection. And they left it with like firing squad, which to me seems more barbaric than anything. Somebody blowing the back of your head off. <laughs> but anyway, they took away lethal injection and, and brought back uh, electrocution. So the guy had two options. One being uh, he could be electrocuted or he could be in my, uh, mid firing squad. So I'm going to ask you this before we get into the meat of this uh, discussion. What would you choose, Kurt? If they had those two, man, I mean. What are, what are the two again? Uh, electric chair or firing squad? <laughs> I don't like. I don't know. We live in a time where everybody has to have an opinion on everything. I guess I don't. You got to pick one or other. I, I guess. I, <laughs> I mean, I maybe you go with the firing squad. It's making the news. Maybe if you had the electric chair. It's not. Get, at least you're making some news on the way out. I guess. I, I don't, just don't know, man. Like you know, when you go get a shot at your doctor, your physical or something, they tell you to give you a shot. The anticipation. Of a, somebody giving you a shot. Does it's he get a blindfold? Seconds. Does he get a blindfold and a cigarette like Bugs? Bunny? I'm sure he does. He probably does. It's like the Tombstone commercial. <laughs> like you but, said, I don't really care, but it does seem like it does. It does seem like a step back. It seems barbaric, like you said. Uh, I know there's people out there that think it's the best thing in the world. That they I should think it's great. It on, they should put it on TV. And, well, yes, and, uh, I agree. Is, Look, uh, man, I, I don't really I'm gonna, care. I'm on the thought process of this. If you willingly take someone's life, yours should be taken, and it shouldn't be easy on you. I mean, they talk about barbaric. Well, you wasn't thinking about barbaric when you was shooting some innocent person. So I feel like you ought to be hung or drove behind a horse or the hell beat out stone like the biblical days. It's all right with me. I don't have yeah. any. I've never side with criminals in any in any situation. So uh, I think they ought to. I think they ought to half electrocute him. And then when he's almost dead, pull it off of there and do it again. Kind of like the sleeper hold. Kind of like how you do the, uh, 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 you know, the, the, uh, hell, I can't even think of the wrestle move I was thinking about. Like the figure four, have him almost out and then let up and then do it again. Um, so they could I don't get, know. They could do it, go a Chris Benoit style. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, I brought that up. Speak real quick. Yeah. And this is totally off the cuff here. Uh, I saw it just made me think I didn't, re- I, you know, I just see the headlines. Tennessee supposedly has it. 
you kill someone drunk driving and they have a kid, you kill that parent, yeah, you pay, pay child support for that kid. How do you pay child support if you're in jail? That's exactly what I thought when I saw that, Kurt. How would you pay child thought support? It, like, oh, that sounds good. And I was like, well, wait a second. Unless they put you on house arrest and continue to let you live, but then it takes away the the manslaughter from DUI. I, I'm not sure. They act like everybody's got a million dollars laying around. You just hand a million dollars over to the children. I mean, <laughs> and most most everybody around these days is broke as shit and don't have no money. So they give you the $31 out of the bank account. And uh, that's where we go. I saw that too. And that's stupid. I mean, we got people that, and we, we vote for people to make rules that make absolutely no sense. It's our fault. And we got one in Lugolf, and I ain't going to go into no detail, but we got one in Lugolf right now that not one person who voted for him has ever said he's a pretty good fella. And now you got him in office and he votes opposite of what you want him to vote for, but you still uh, share his uh, councilman seat. It's the stupidest people. A lot of my, my, my friends, you're stupid. If you're voting for somebody who you would never say is a pretty good fella, you're an idiot. I don't care if Republican, Democrat, or otherwise, and he's not on your side. We'll stop this uh, uh, public debate right here on uh, politics. We'll talk about that when November. Your name maybe. names? No, nah, not yet. <laughs> not yet. We won't go out there yet, but we will here soon. But speaking of death row, Kurt, one thing about the death row is uh, before you go in the chair, they give you the option. You'll get your last meal. Now, they're going to give you, uh, I guess they give you a pad and paper and say, write down what you want. And, uh, you know, I guess it's a full course, whatever you want. I don't know the details of the meal, but I'm assuming you can go with whatever you want. You're about to die, so they're going to give you this one last request. What's yours? What's your five-course meal? I thought about this, and, and I'm going to go, I'm just going to go this. Okay. I'm going to get one of these, this is going to be a big plate. And I'm going to go back back in the day to Thanksgiving dinner at my grandparents on my mom's side, on the Robert's side. And then I'm going to go to my grandma's in Paxville on the Keith side and get, get, get it there, Thanksgiving. So Are you going to a time have, machine? I'm going back. Huh? Are you going in a time machine? <laughs> yeah. You told me. <laughs> no, I'm saying right now. you telling me I'm the warden and you're saying, what you going to eat tomorrow before I kill you? What you? What are you? Not going back to your best days of eating? Are you dummy? I'm talking about the day. I ain't talking about that one time you had a, a great meal somewhere. If I'm going look your Thanksgiving stuff, your mac and cheese, your uh, barbecue, your your uh, Thanksgiving turkey, your hash and rice, um, sweet right. potato souffle, um, pecan pie. So yours is going to be sponsored by It's going to be Barrel. a Thanksgiving meal. Like I eat every Thanksgiving and I usually wish I'm dead after I get through eating that. So <laughs> this man right here. Go ahead and name yours. Food review guy. In 1980, 1983, my grandma <laughs> made a potato salad and ham that was really good. I'm going to go back in the time machine and get that plate before y'all fry me at it. Hey, my man. I'm I got as good a chance of going in a time machine as I end up on death row. I don't hardly get off the couch on the weekend. So very good, very good. And I hope neither one of us ever face this, but I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot it like this. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh I'm gonna go get a salad from Willie Sue's that comes with them buttery honey croissants and uh the the, the the tomato bacon dressing. I'm gonna start with that. And then I'm probably just going to have everything that Rodney Scott will bring me. I'll probably just get Rodney Scott uh, to, you know, I like a lot of barbecue joints and I can say Lewis and I can say Ronnie's, but I feel like far as everything on the board from macaroni to collard greens, to ribs, to barbecue, to beans, to banana pudding, to a uh, loaf of light bread on the side, sweet tea. I feel like I would just have it catered. I may would get a, I may would get a couple of wings from home team. I do like them wings. I go maybe get a Brunswick stew from there. Maybe some chicken cracklings. They got a solid menu at the home team as well. Home team's a good one. That's why I figured you'd have went with. 
I mean, if my grandparents were still alive, I'd get them to make me a pan of that cornbread dressing, but obviously I can't go back in time. You like can. You. you can. You can today, brother. <laughs> it's I love your to, fantasy meal. I'd love to get my grandpappy up out in the grave and see if he wants to cut up some <laughs> onions and green peppers and make me some cornbread dressing, but I'm pretty sure that's the last thing he'd want to do. But uh, I didn't know I didn't know the rules of this uh, last meal. Well, I mean, you're on death row. I mean, we're not giving you... We're not giving you back to the future. But uh, anyway, okay. So you pull out the grandparents' recipe books, man. My grandma's had recipe books. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. My, mine, and you said sweet potato souffle. I got an aunt that makes corn souffle, which is pretty much the same thing, but it's corn, it's sweet corn. Man, that stuff's good. I'd probably throw that in there. I don't eat a lot at one time, man. So I don't know how long they give you on death row, but I probably won't get my money's worth. And I would probably, if they didn't let me use the bathroom, I'd probably shit myself as soon as they hit me with the electricity. They probably have a lot more than they, blood. They, and say, they say you they say you do that anyways, right? Well, I'm gonna tell you, if you let me go to Rodney Scott's and then finish off with banana, only thing banana pudding does is make a turd. So I mean, that's gonna clean it up. That's gonna I hate to be the janitor in the uh uh in my cell. But uh all right. And then next week, guys, when we talk again about turds and crapping ourselves in the electric chair on the well, I mean, Rondo podcast. We are talking about getting older, so that's a possibility, <laughs> too. There's some stories that can be thrown out there. It's a lot different than it used to be on, on a bodily function. So maybe we'll store that one up for maybe a birthday week. Maybe we're not. I'm still good on week. that. I still, I'm still good. Yeah, I mean. We'll talk about this later, but Kurt don't mind running into the quick mart and dropping the deuces and saying never thought about it. So <laughs> most of us are selective at our truck stops or clean establishments, pharmacies, or uh, you know the Walgreens of the world, or maybe hotels. Kurt will roll right up into a you know a quick shop and then drop a bomb in there, and then he, he don't think twice about it. So uh, I also haven't left a pair of underwear on the side of the road like a lot of people. So. No, I've, 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 I've had the big trouble on uh, Peach Orchard Road in Sumter more than once. So I mean, seven uh, fifteen in the morning, got all four doors open trying to block me from you know from cleaning up a mess that I made. So getting old ain't good. But anyway, that's all we got this week. Multiple documentaries or stories of uh, old times growing up. Uh, we talked about Ric Flair, Mike Tyson. Uh, the NBA playoffs will be a lot, a lot more in depth. They'll be in the second round next week when we talk about it. Um, you know, we won't be talking about ham and macaroni and cheese next week, I doubt. But uh, nor will we talk about the, the death penalty or going back into the past. So uh, appreciate you guys listening. Tell them what to do, Kurt. Hit the like and subscribe button. Show some class, people. <laughs> All right. That'll do it for this week's uh, Rhino and Curtis podcast. Appreciate all y'all listening. See y'all next week. Later on. <laughs>